making layouts responsive can be a bit of a struggle. So let's look at five different layouts that we can create with just a few lines of CSS and as a bonus, do them all without any media queries whatsoever. And we might as well jump right into the first one. And here we are with just a very simple layout. I have a parent with a whole bunch of children in there. They're all divs. There's really nothing fancy going on here. Now, even though we're doing it with really generic, non-realistic looking stuff right now, all of these would work with real content. It's just easy to compare one to the next when they're all using the same thing like this. Now, the first one that we're gonna look at, I often call a flex group, but we'll call it the cluster here because we sort of create clusters of elements. And the key to it is a display flex with a gap. The problem with this is it causes overflow. So we can easily fix that with the flex wrap right here, which makes items wrap around. Now when we resize our browser, everything works and we're creating these little clusters of elements as I like to call them because they're just sort of jumbled up and around like that. So we get this type of thing going on. This can be really useful for things like tags, navigations, anything where you want to keep the width of the element to sort of stick around at that width rather than being in with each one of them being a fixed size. And before we move on to the second one, one thing I do want to mention is while all the solutions that we're looking at here are about creating responsive layouts without media queries, I don't want you to think that that means we should completely avoid media queries. They definitely have their purpose and their point. The idea we're looking at here is more of these intrinsic designs that will just sort of flow, they'll work, we don't have to think about it too much and let the browser make a lot of the decisions for us, which is always a good thing. But sometimes you need media queries. We don't wanna go all out with media queries and sort of oversaturate with them, which can be a maintenance issue, but we also shouldn't avoid them just to avoid them and to come up with like more complex solutions when you know, sometimes just throwing a media query in there just works. Anyway, with that out of the way, we can go into the second one. And this one is using display grid rather than flex. And we're using the repeat syntax right here to create the different columns the items will be living in. Basically, we're saying the smallest they can get is 10 rem. And the 1fr just means get as big as you can get. But as soon as they can fit to that 10 rem, they'll shrink and add that next column in there and we can shrink things down that way and it makes it nice and responsive. The one issue you can run into here is if your minimum size is too big, when you get to smaller screen sizes, it can cause overflow, even though it's working perfectly well at larger sizes. And so there we go, we can see the overflow coming out the side there. The way to fix this looks a little bit strange, but it works really well. And to fix that, what we wanna do is replace that 22 that we had here with a min function, which would be a 22, and we'll keep that number there and put 100% here and you can see it fixes that overflow issue and everything else still works exactly as it was before. It looks a little bit strange here. It could be a little bit hard to read when you first come across something like this. And so one option is to use a custom property to replace it with. So we're not too worried about how this part is working. We just know that if we adjust that min column size that we can adjust how it's going to be working and we can keep on going from there. And if you feel the need to, we could add a comment to make this more clear as well. Now, if you want something similar to that last one, but that's a little bit more flexible, we can go with a flexible grid that starts off exactly like our cluster did, but then we can add this line in right here, which allows the items to grow. And you'll notice now we have these three across the bottom right there. This is different from the previous one that we looked at, where every column is locked in and it was a very specific size and it will still adjust and still work. So sometimes we prefer things that are more like this where we have those breaks and other times it's better if all the columns match all the way down. In those times we can use the auto grid and in other times we can use this type of method instead. Now the next one we're gonna look at turns back to grid for the solution and in this case what we're going to do is a little bit like a flex direction, you can switch that. We can choose the default for the way rows or columns are created by using a grid auto flow of column and then we can give those a minimum size and it will cause overflow and that's almost the point or it is the point I should say of this one. The auto columns here will decide how big each one of those columns is so you can have it be anywhere from 0 to 100. I guess it could be bigger than 100 but it would be a little bit awkward. So let's go back to 50 for now. The first thing we're going to do is actually make it scrollable instead of having it overflow at the side so we can do that with an overflow x of scroll and now the items are coming this way. We have a scroll bar there to show us that it's working. Now to make this a little bit better Better, what we can do is add in a scroll snap type of mandatory on the X. Now for this to also work, we also need the scroll snap align and we can probably want start on that, though you can do middle and other things along there as well. And now what we do is if somebody scrolls along a little bit, you can see it snaps to the next one. This is especially good on touch devices, but we can use the scroll like that. Or if somebody's scrolling with their mouse wheel, it will snap into place as soon as they stop scrolling. Though the behaviors there are a little bit different depending on the browser if you're using the mouse wheel. Now we can make one more adjustment to our reel here that with a scroll padding of one rem. And what that's going to do is when we snap into place, it also includes the padding on the edge there. 
so we can make something that works a little bit better and now our items will line up with that one rem of padding on the side which matches our gap now because we are doing the same value of our gap we might as well turn that into a custom property and use it in a few places including on our columns just to make them line up perfectly like that and we can still scroll or you can even use your keyboard and I didn't mention that before but we can go back and forth if you want them to line up perfectly here or if you like the idea of them overflowing to show that there's more of them you could go in with something like a 30% just to show that there is stuff hidden off to the side and you know it makes it a little bit more obvious that you should be scrolling to see more content and I've looked at setting up a reel like this to, uh, with a little bit more fancy stuff going on to make it like a Netflix type scroller so if you're curious about that there is a link in the description but we do have one more layout to take a look at and before we get to the last solution which is about making a main content with a sidebar with no media queries and it just works just really really fast I want to let you know that if creating responsive layouts is something that you do struggle with I have created a completely free course called conquering responsive layouts it's less about looking at techniques and specific patterns that we can follow and it's a lot more about getting into the right mindset and simplifying things as much as possible and just helping make responsiveness something you don't really need to struggle with if that sounds interesting to you the link is right in the description and with that let's get on to this last one and for this last one we're going to jump back over to here because i made a change to the content where i've created this main with sidebar and we only have two divs coming in uh, i've called them both child children it doesn't matter what we call them uh, though you could go with a main and a sidebar if you want to make it easy to switch the side of them but basically I have a lot of content in that one and a little bit less in this one and we want to do like a main content area plus a sidebar make it responsive and everything now for this one the first thing we want to do is our main with sidebar right there with a the display of flex and it sort of gives us what we want in a way but if we make the screen smaller it's not what I would call responsive uh, it's just getting smushed down and this is just by chance based on the content that is inside of them it's not very nice now the first thing we'll do is actually bring our sidebar all the way up and that one's nice and easy. For this one we'll use an align item start which will keep the sidebar at the minimum size that we have it or if for some reason your main was longer it would also prevent the main from growing in height. Now for this to work without any media queries we're also going to want a flex wrap of wrap on there and what that's doing is it's putting my sidebar all the way down at the bottom now which isn't ideal but it's the first step that we do need to take now for this next part we're going to get into some flexbox hackery a little bit uh, where we have the we're going to first start by selecting our first and last child so that will be the main and that will be this one if you'd rather just make that a class of main content and a class of sidebar that would be perfectly fine as well now the first thing we're going to do is give each one of these a flex basis and by having a flex basis on there this is going to be roughly the minimum size we want to allow either of these to be with nothing else happening that's actually how big they currently are though if we were to get run out of room you'll see that that one is now falling down to the bottom because there's not enough room the flex wrap is kicking in so that is currently how it's working and then it comes back up and if I want I can make them smaller or bigger I can play with these and these will be roughly the smallest that they would be allowed to get to it's not going to be a perfect science with this one now on the first child the main area here we want it to grow into that extra space that was available so we can use a flex grow of one on there and then even though this is at 300 400 100 this will grow into whatever the available space was so if I turn that back to zero which is the default we end up with that extra space that's on the side we put it back to one and now it's allowed to grow bigger than that 500 to fill into the space so now we have something that can grow it can shrink and at one point it will cause everything to wrap down and this will go down below here the sidebar looks pretty terrible at the moment though when it is in this more responsive mode where their items are stacked so we can fix that by also putting a flex grow not only having it here but also allowing the sidebar to grow as well so when they run out of room it will grow and fill up this space underneath as is a bit more typical in this type of layout the problem that that causes is when we're getting to the larger sizes they're both growing at the same rate and now my sidebar is getting much bigger than I'd ideally like it to get to. So what we can do instead of that is we can treat this instead of a minimum size, let's treat this as sort of the size I want it to stay at when we're in a two column layout. And to do that, this is where that hackery comes in, where you can actually just put this flex grow here to a really big number. And because the rate of growth on this is so much bigger than the rate of growth on this, this will take up all the leftover available space and this one basically can't grow. 
So when we're here, it more or less gets locked in at that 300 pixel space. But once it shrinks down and it, the sidebar falls down to the bottom over here, there's nothing next to it. So there is empty space. There's nothing fighting against it with a larger flex grow and it's able to fill in the rest of the space there. I got this trick from every layout by Hayden Pickering and Andy Bell. I'd strongly encourage checking it out. So I will put a link in the description for that. So when we use this pattern, this 500 pixels here almost becomes your breakpoint in the sense that it's roughly when this gets to 500 pixels and this is at 300 pixels in that realm that at one point it will break. Again, these are not exact numbers. They're roughly accurate uh, if you look at your dev tools and you can play around with this a little bit more. It might look a little strange, so maybe leave a code comment to explain what's actually happening here. But this can be a very useful way to get two columns and you could do this with more than just two if you wanted to as well, but without any requirements for media queries and just letting the browser figure it out. And of course, then in this case, it's working really well in this larger space that just grows on to infinity. You could plug this into different situations and whatever it's in, it's always going to work. Now, if you did enjoy this video and you're struggling with responsive layouts, don't forget about that free course. I have linked down below. But also one thing that I've noticed that people do a lot of that gets them into trouble is using percentages in places they shouldn't. So if you'd like to know more about that, I've created a video and you can check it out right here. And with that, I'd like to thank my enablers of awesome, Jan, Johnny, Michael, Patrick, Simon, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.